Hey, Stampers Kim from StampingImperfection.com. Thanks for joining me today. I want to share a one layer card that I'm going to make with some of the new Sunny Studio stamps from their, their new fall release. I am totally loving this little stamp company. They have the cutest stamps. If you have not checked out Sunny Studio, you should definitely do that. They have the cutest little um, stamp sets, lots of cute critters and um, little kids and faces and things. So these papers are new from their new fall release and I just loved the colors. I just you know had to have them. I thought they were beautiful. They're two-sided papers. This particular set is argyle on one side and sort of a wood look on the other side and the colors are just bold and beautiful and just they scream fall so I think they're beautiful you can see there I have a card that I made yesterday playing around with the papers and one of the stamp sets this is the fall kiddo set I was practicing my coloring um, so I wanted to color faces and hair and practice that so I that's what I was doing there and around that I have the everyday comic strip die that I used I just used the frame part of it and I really love it you can see that most of the or all of the stamp sets come with coordinating die sets like you can purchase the die the coordinating die if you want to that's the comic strip um, everyday set you can see all the stuff that came in this fall release like here is um, just a sentiment set it's got a script coordinating die that you can purchase covers all kinds of holidays it's a beautiful tree I haven't played with yet the fruit I haven't played with yet like and they all have coordinating dies then there are some standalone dies that I think are really amazing this acorn is so pretty it makes all kinds of great cards here's a slider card die with lots of tag potential also this is a film strip die it's got tons of different um, pumpkin and sunflower images and then there was a separate die with trees and roads and things like that like all of these stamps and dies really lend themselves wonderfully to scene building stamps or cards and then of course there's home sweet gnome which I just love you can see that when I get my stamps and dies I store them in these these clear plastic um, stamp and die storage my stamps go on one side the coordinating dies go on the other side this is working very well for me like I can find the die that goes with the stamp set when I need it so I'm pulling out two of the stamp sets to play with today and one of them is the autumn splendor and then I'm gonna pull out a separate greeting called autumn greetings I just love this greeting set I love that they mix the fonts I really like the mixed fonts on there so I'm gonna play with those two sets today and I'm gonna create um, oh and I also wanted to remember to show you that Sunny Studio with every order you get a little free die um, and I think that's just really nice I love that you get something free like I don't know why but I love that so I have a uh, Nina Solar White cut at four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm going to mask a piece of that off for my sentiment so this is um, one of my favorite card layouts and I don't know why I just really wanted to do a card with this layout today um, trying to decide what colors I realize I love those colors in the paper so I pulled out the paper set and I pulled out the swatch ring that I made of my Catherine Pooler inks and then I just started comparing and looking for Catherine Pooler colors that actually were the colors from those papers so I pulled out a bunch of, of Catherine Pooler inks I have a yellow sauna blue daydream purple royal treatment and then there's an orange um, which I kind of flew by there that's called Mandarin Spice I'm also um, and one of the reasons I picked I just love how vibrant these colors are and that they coordinate together I just love them um, I also decide I'm doing leaves I better have a green here so I pull my ring back out and pick a green that I think is perfect for fall it's eucalyptus and I realize I also need a brown so I pulled out the 
um, icing on the cake brown that that Catherine Pooler carries. So I want to mask off where my sentiment's going to go, and then I'm going to stamp those leaves so that the I want this to look like I stamped a bunch of leaves and then I put a separate piece of cardstock over the top. So that's a piece of masking paper. Usually I use this post-it removable tape. It's sticky on one side and sort of feels like paper on the other side, but it's two inches wide and that was just a little wider than I wanted. So instead of using that, which I love that, th that stuff is perfect for techniques like this. I instead want it to be a little thinner. So I pulled out my stamping mask paper and I just cut a strip that was one and a half inches wide and then a little bit longer than the, the page or the um, card bit, the card front that I was using. So this is stamping mask paper from Inka Dinka Do. I use this all the time. Like if I want to cover a flower, um, I'll die cut it out because you can die cut this because it's got this paper backing. So you can put this in your die cut machine and then use a die to cut it out and then stick that die over what you just stamped. So I really like this, like this is great stuff. I'm just going to sort of slide this over to the edge and um, sort of line it up with my grid paper so I get this sort of straight. I like to eyeball things, but I'm not very good at it. And I'm also smoothing down the sides of this because I hate it when the ink gets underneath it. And this paper is actually perfect um, for doing this because when I remove it, it isn't going to remove part of my cardstock. So now I've pulled out my Catherine Pooler clear blocks. These are my favorite clear blocks. Like these are brilliant. They're, they're th nice and thick so you have something to hang on to and the edges are rounded so they're not sharp edges and they she also has the indent which I find very comfortable to hold but the truly brilliant thing is that grid on the top like I got rid of my old clear blocks when I discovered these so I'm gonna pull out um, the leaf images and put each one on a separate block. And then uh, the th one of the things I like about this stamp set is, is that it's got a separate stem and vein um, stamp. So it's sort of a top layer in a way. And I like that that's separate because usually that ends up part of it and then it's the same color as your leaf. And I like that I can make it a different color. Because um, you can see, I've got blue and purple there. I'm not going for realistic fall colors of real leaves, but I am going to use some fall co leaves, that, the colors that I love. Now, on this stamp set, you'll also notice there are, there are like half leaf stamps. There's some berries and a branch, and there's an acorn. There's some nice sentiments. Like, there are a lot of stamps in this little set. So I'm really liking it. And I really like the fact that it's got a coordinating die set. Um, I just love it. Now, one of the reasons that I like using my Catherine Pooler inks is because I can put multiple colors of ink on one stamp without transferring ink from one ink pad to another. So I'm using the sauna and the eucalyptus, the yellow and the green, and just adding the ink on and that's that. I'm not trying to smooth it out or do anything. Like I could have taken a dauber and and um, you know smoothed it out or spritzed it with water and have a watercolor effect, but I don't mind that line. And I didn't even clean off that stamp before I redid that. So I'm going to just continue to do this with the rest. And one of the things I like to include here, I'm using the Mandarin Spice, which is an orange color along with that sauna the yellow. I'm going to do a couple of those. Again, I'm not cleaning off my stamp in between because they really don't transfer. Catherine Pooler actually shows this in videos. And um, I like to include a little blue. And I realize that's, that leaves aren't blue, but a long time ago, like eight years ago, I saw a beautiful card somebody made. It was a fall card and they had just a touch of blue and I just loved it. So whenever I make fall cards, I always include a pretty blue and that daydream blue is amazing. Now I've, I've really labeled all parts of this ink pad when I did my color swatch thing. 
I find it very helpful. Um, now I'm adding some purple because this is just beautiful, this color. Um, not realistic at all. I'm not trying to make it realistic. And I'm going to do uh, the eucalyptus and the icing on the cake. And now I want to sort of create a second layer. I sort of want the leaves to look like they're falling or flowing around the card. Um, so I'm just adding some more. I'm going to take this smaller stamp and add a bunch of smaller ones and um, you know just make it look like there are a lot more leaves and that they're not all in a row I didn't want them all to be in a row and um, now I'm gonna add some plain yellow ones there I love this yellow she's got a lot of yellows this one has a little bit of brown or a little bit of orange I don't know there's something about it I just love but now I'm gonna take the icing on the cake and I'm going to add the the stem and veins and I really like the way that brown is looking on top of those leaves like it's giving it a pop of color and adding one more um, dimension like I really like the way this looks this is this was a clever way for them to create these and you don't have to use that if you like the way it looks stamped and again, if you don't like how the lines look, um, w the way I mix the colors, spritz some water on it. It'll give you a little watercolor look. Use a dauber or a Q-tip to blot it out. Put your ink on with markers. And um, I don't realize that I've missed two there, but that's an easy fix later when I do realize it. And I feel like I want to clean up the edges there and I could have done this before I peeled off the um, masking paper but I'm gonna use a ruler and I'm using my pilot this is a, like a fine black liner pen which I really like and I'm gonna wipe that off because too many times I've transferred ink and smooched things when I didn't want to. So I'm going to do both of those and that kind of cleans up the edge and really defines my sentiment and really does help it look like it's a piece of cardstock like that there's more than one layer. So I'm pulling out the autumn greetings and my mini misty. I like to do use my mini misty when I add greetings and this is the autumn greetings sentiment from the autumn greetings set. I love the mix of fonts here. I think this is super pretty um, and I'm gonna like check the this is um, notice that I tuck that right in the corner so I'm not bothering with magnets but I'm checking to make sure that it's evenly spaced on both sides and that it's really along one of the grid lines so it's straight and now I'm gonna pull out my favorite ink for sentiments and this is my Alta new um, crisp ink that's permanent black. It's a permanent black ink. I love this ink. It's my go-to ink for everything. I use it for things I'm going to watercolor. I use it for my alcohol markers. My Alta New Artist markers are alcohol markers. And also my the meager supply of Copics that I have. Um, I use this ink also. I just really like it. So I'm going to stamp it a second time to make it nice and dark. I really love when the greetings are crisp and dark and just completely stamped. So the misty has opened a whole new world for me. I feel like it really makes your cards look a lot more professional when you've done that. So I'll put this stuff aside. At this point I realize I have to fix those two leaves. So I'm going to pull out a little piece of that, um, that post-it tape and put a little mask over so I can fix those two and I don't get it into the sentiment and I'm going to cover up that black line I put down there and then I'm going to stamp the stem and vein on those two that I missed so this is an easy fix this is not a big deal it only takes me a minute or so and I'm done I can remove that and I could call it a day here. I could just attach this to a card base if I wanted to. 
Um, but I want to add another little touch. This little touch to me adds a huge amount of dimension to a one layer card. It takes a one layer card to the next level. Now I've pulled out a gray marker and this is the lightest gray Alta New marker I have. It's WG01. I could do this with a darker gray to really make this pop, but I'm creating a drop shadow on the left and on the bottom of the images. And I am going to go along those stems also. Um, but I'm going to do this on all of the leaves and there I go along the stem and I'm going to do it along the bottom of the other one up there that I haven't done yet. But I keep going until I get to the point where I feel like, oh, now I'm on the right side of the image because I'm sort of creating a shadow on one side and not a shadow on the other side. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but for some reason, I... I just love how this makes the images really pop. So I fuss with all the little things and get some spots I see that I missed. And another thing I like to do is I'm going to pull out my ruler and I'm going to add a drop shadow around that sentiment. I'm putting that on the outside of those black lines. I'm going to do it on both, on the outside of both of them. And that's going to just make it look like an actual piece of cardstock. Like, honestly, in person, that looks like a separate piece of cardstock. I just really like the way it came out. Now, at this point, I realize I got a little bit, uh, that liner didn't quite dry. So I'm just rubbing that on to, I'm just scribbling it onto like a piece of paper and a paper towel to get the black liner off. It comes off pretty easily. That's all you have to do. And I'm just finishing that up. And now I'm going to attach it to my card base. So I'm pulling out a card base that I already cut. It's four and a quarter by 11. I'm going to score it at five and a half. And this is my score buddy from ScorePal. It's like a mini ScorePal. I really like this size to have on my desk. And I'm using actually a Teflon bone folder, which I love. It feels good. In your hand and it doesn't leave shiny marks when you do your um, when you use it to crease that fold to burnish stuff so I really like it so this is now my 3m foam tape and I put a generous amount on here I really like this stuff I bought a couple of rolls at an electronic supply company and um, it lasts a, a ridiculous, like six or seven months for one roll. Now when I put this on, I line up along the fold and then along one edge because if I mess it up at the fold, I can't cut that off, but I can trim off edges and bottoms if I need to. So I want to add a couple more touches. And one thing, of course, I need sequins. I'm pulling out my Neat and Tangled Jewel Mix. I love these. They're so pretty. They're beautiful fall colors. There's a red in there. I want to make sure I get a red because I want a little red on the card. Um, and then there's blue in there and a couple of purples. I'm going to add more of those. And then there's a gold. And to attach these, so I place them down. I like them sort of in a triangle formation and sort of at an angle across my greeting. So I'm pulling out one of the strips I pulled off from the foam tape and I'm putting some of my multimedia mat onto that. And you'll notice I have a precision tip on that that came from another little um, squeeze jar I had and it fit perfectly on there. So I, I like this because it dries clear and I'm a little sloppy with glue. I'm using my um, quick stick from we are memory keepers because it's got sort of this sticky clay stuff on one end and then it's got a pointer tool and then it's got a sort of a spatula end I use the pointer end and I do this to hold the to mark my place I took a little bit of time to put those down so I want to kind of get them in the spots that I had them marked for and um, I'm using my right pinky to hold down the that paper I have the glue on and then that pointer holds my spot and then it helps me remove the sequin from the quick stick. 
And again, at this point, I could call this card complete, but I decide that it just needs one more thing. Because doesn't a card always just need one more thing? And I want to put some splatter on there. So I'm going to cover up that greeting because I want that to look like I made the card and then put a big greeting across the card that I just made. So I don't want the splatter to get on that part. So that's the 3M post-it sticky tape. And I'm using the icing on the cake. And I'm just putting a little bit on my craft pad. And then I'm going to spritz it with some water. And I'm going to pull out one of my round brushes. I'm just any round brush. And I'm just going to mix that water in there and make it really watery. So you can see it's just, it's not even a big round brush. Um, but I want to get a lot of paint on there. And then I'm just going to tap it against my finger. And just add that. And there is a fine line between just right amount of splatter and way too much. So I'm stopping while I think it still looks like an okay amount of splatter. I feel like it's better to not have enough than to have too much splatter. So now I can remove that post-it and that's going to complete my card. And there are lots of different ways I could have added that ink. Like I said, you could do watercolors. You could, um, once you ink up your stamp, spritz it with water, smooth out the lines between the colors with a dauber or a Q-tip. Um, add it with markers, watercolor paint. There's so many ways you could do it. Colored pencils. You could add more details with, um, you know, a gel pen or some uh, a liner brush from a, and using watercolor paints or watercolor off your colored pencils. But that's going to complete my card. So stop by my blog at stampingimperfection.com. I will have links to all the products there. You can um, check out Sunny Studios. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Love the stamps and dies. And um, please give my video a like and share with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching.